All right, what's up, guys? I was just fucking with you with that intro, but this will be a video about uh, how Gazelle King, one of the uh, most overrated players of all time. I just caught wind of his like retirement video, uh, Last Words, The King's Legacy, whatever, you know, all this cocky bullshit, and I thought I'd, uh, you know, prove all this shit wrong and show some examples of this and that and stuff he says here, so that's all this will be about. You know, talk a little bit about farm and town and their differences and how each have their, uh, you know, skill points, but... It'll just be a little video. I'll use experts from Giz ex excerpts from uh, Gazelle's video, and you'll see here in a sec why he is dead weight. Sure, some won't agree with me, but I am a highly esteemed team player, one of the best of all time. As everyone knows, clearly. So here's the uh, quote unquote highly esteemed uh, grief player Gazelle. He should have cut left there, no brainer. Instead, he runs into a double block like a dumbass and can't jump over two zombies and gets killed. Uh, here, he just has no strafe jump ability, no actual skill to get past two zombies with no jug. It's like he's got a big anchor on his head. And then here, he just shows no ability to cut back. So it's just not a good... He, he doesn't have good grief instincts. You know, he doesn't even try and cut back. Just ran into the zombies like dead weight he is. I know there's a lot of good revivers out there, but, uh, there's really no arguing with the top three, which are, uh, me, Gazelle, and Gazelle. Uh, and then you have Gazelle, and then I'll answer that real quick here. Uh, Zomdi and Knuckles, I could agree on. I mean, top three revivers is very hard to pick on town, so it's such a really such an easy task. But I mean, I know Zomdestroy is a pretty good reviver, pretty good all around player. Uh, I'll get more into him about how he kind of just switches whoever he's having success with right now. He just falls in love with. That's just kind of a fault of Zomdestroyer. But. Uh, Knuckles, I agree with. I mean, I was like 0-26 in the game. He was like 0-38. He beat me. I took my first down. Like, it was a good revive game. It was fun. But uh, he's a good reviver. But uh, as for Gazelle, good reviver, but not top three. I'd put him maybe six or seven on my overall list, but not the best. Yeah, there's really no debating um, when you're talking about best revivers. That's clear, without a doubt. Uh, again, Zamastra, I can see on that list. Honestly, although Knuckles, I see, is a good reviver, and he could do that, he doesn't play those roles in tournaments. I don't mean to take that away from him, that he doesn't have that skill. But uh, he, didn't, he doesn't really play that role, so I'm iffy with that. I mean, that's not ridiculous, because that was easily the least talented, the least, the, the worst decision maker of those two, of those three, you know. But, uh, it, 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 I mean, it's incorrect. He can say he's top three, but he's not. But uh, the other thing I want you to notice is notice how many times he says there really is no debating or no argument. You know, that's that's the only thing you can say. Or you'll know, say, since I'm among the elite, you know, my opinion rules all or whatever. My opinion's valid or something like that. I mean, that's just the biggest bullshit ever. He doesn't have any substantial or concrete evidence to back it up. So that's what he continuously uses throughout this video. And it's just sad. And, you know, he just he just rambles on, you know, to be honest, just speaking utter nonsense, you know, speaking out of his ass. You know, he has no proof for any of the statements he makes. So watch that throughout the rest of the video. I'll try and point it out. But that's the best reason he can give as to why you should believe what he's saying. The best reefers move here uh, without a doubt Bane, TP Derek, and Eldog 54, aka uh, Beto Sky, some people know Eldog is that. Uh, when we talk about good reefers, there's of course a lot that come to mind, but the thing about Bane, Derek, and Eldog is like with their uh, with the revivers is uh, that they can all back themselves up with starting wins, which a lot of people just can't do. Alright, here's more farm clips, guys. Don't give me shit about these clips. I cut it real quick so you guys would not look at a boring, like, iMovie text. These are just, like, really basic, like, spray down, escapes, whatever. Just so you have a little something to watch. But, uh, anyways, that, those three is probably, like, the most accurate thing Gazelle says in this whole video. Besides pack of punches for noobs, which I'll get to in a little bit. But, uh, all three of those I can see, especially when he retired. Like, now there's better, you know, Bane's always gonna be one of the best pistol griefers. But now with the YY, you know, I'll take Remedy or Tricky Shot or... Maybe even terrain or knuckles all day over those guys, but uh, in terms of you know best griefers, I thought it was a decent list. Obviously, Derek's up there either with the pistol or the YY he's pretty good at. So uh, probably the least bullshit thing Gazelle says in the whole video. And again, just to reiterate here, since I got ten more seconds to clip, just keep paying attention to how much he says without a doubt, or there's really no arguing. Yeah, you because know? like I said, that's the only reasoning he has to support anything he says, which is terrible reasoning. <laughs> I also asked uh, Zom Destroyer for his top five all-time players, and his list was exactly the same as mine, which really isn't that big of a surprise, honestly. So yeah, um, there's really no arguing the top five list. I realize there's a lot of uh, other high-caliber players out there, but when you're talking about top five, there's really no question about it. So yeah, and uh, me and Zom Destroyer are two of the most highly esteemed players to ever play. So the fact that we both have the same list really is a testament to our knowledge of the elite players. 
All right, so quite a few things I want to point out after that voice clip. Uh, again, here, these are clips, guys. I had an hour and, like, 40 minutes of footage. Do not give me any shit. Not one word about, like, I know none of these are special. There's a simple pit escape, simple door block. I just wanted to give you guys some footage so you're not bored to death looking at, looking at the text. But, uh, so I'm going to be shit about the clips. Um, again, a couple things I want to talk about are how Zom Destroyer, I, I, I like him as a grief player. I... I don't think he's a terrible person, but he he will flip flop anything in terms of who he's having success with currently. I mean, I there's no better person for me to talk about him than myself. I've had I've played with him for over a year now, and we've won we won everything there was to win on farm. You know, for the three four months that we played, what was highly competitive summer 2013, we came back for the winter, and we won three out of four tournaments we entered there. Uh, so I mean, I know him personally. I know. He's just very emotionally into whatever he gets into. Whoever, whoever he's having success with, whoever he's winning tournaments with, he will ultimately praise and say this and that. I'm not saying his list is not accurate, but there's no way Gazelle is in the top five of all time in general, and especially maybe maybe Town, he'd put it be at like number five or six again all time. But, I mean, even that's a stretch, honestly. And I say that, you guys haven't seen the next clip I'll show. That top five list he gave, as well as Zom Destroyer, he apparently told them both to evaluate, or told Zom Destroyer and himself to evaluate all time, like, based on Farm and Town. He didn't look at Cell Block. Um, so that's what makes that list even more uh, preposterous. But yeah, back to Zom Destroyer. Not to discredit his list, but he's very, I don't want to say bipolar, certainly not the right word, but he's very, not unstable, but he'll, he'll switch his opinion to whatever fits the need, because whoever he's winning with, all you have to do is hit win one tournament. I've won dozens of tournaments with Zom Destroyer, and then I play him in a series, I could play him, we could win four tournaments straight, which has basically happened, and then I play him in a series the next day, joking around series 3v3, and he'll like, remove me after I beat him, like 3-1 or something, like, he just gets very caught up in the moment and doesn't really evaluate what people have done in the past, or uh, what has been done in the past, because there's, there's no question that putting guys like L dog and up there on top five all time it's just it's just ridiculous and to put him and himself or himself and Bane on there is just ridiculous Bane's only won like 10 tournaments and they've all been on town and they've had rigged tournaments of American hosts only because they're scared of the UK players so that list is inaccurate to say the least but uh again honestly Zom Destroyer is really the only one I could be for sure out of those five that I would put on there I would never put Gazelle or Bane for sure or L dog I mean they all we're good at town. L Dog ran town for the early months, but uh, Gazelle and Bay never really ran town besides for everyone quit. I think Gazelle played in his own Grand Prix tournaments where he only played with like two or threes or less, so uh, definitely an official tournament, as uh, Gazelle would say. But uh, honestly, those were a joke. But um, the uh, the only one I could see there is Zomestroyer. Maybe Knuckles, to be honest. He obviously ran town for a little bit, and he's a pretty good farm player. But uh, Zomestroyer is the only one I could say for certain. So when he says without question, he's in the top five, that's just pretty funny to me. And just to further hit home with, you know, how Zomstroyer just flip-flops and is real in the moment as I uh, slaughter a zombie, or uh, almost like a chicken there. Um, uh, he, he, like, four mo three months ago, if you asked him when I retired, if you watched the con comments of uh, my videos, he goes, oh, Reflex, you're the best, love you, definitely the greatest of all time, and Jeff, you know, best team ever, unbeatable. Like, it's all in the comments, essentially, and I'm sure you guys have all heard him say that. And again, I don't mean to take anything away from him, and I don't think I am when I say this, but he just flip-flops his opinion. He's a great player, has been on both maps, he's kind of done now, but not the most trustworthy. Or valid opinion to get, because uh, Zomashore's opinion changes from day to day, maybe even hour to hour, so uh, you can't really get an accurate list from him, in all honesty. Like I was talking about, the farm players that come to town and really just can't compete, he won't swap. Okay, so I'm going to address the most recent statement you just heard about how farm players come to town and can't compete. Uh, if you haven't noticed by now, because I'll just talk out of his ass with no concrete evidence. Here are numbers to prove this. Everybody on this list, this list is farm players who ran town at farm, or, or sorry, who ran farm at one point. They ran, like they were on top for a month or two, or they've won at least, every guy on this list has won uh, 15 plus tournaments. You know, Zomestroy is around 30, Jeff is around 30. All these guys have dominated farm at one point. And they learned to go to town and also win at town. All these guys have tournament wins on town, except for Terrain and Elmo, who haven't played in that many tournaments. But again, they're a top player, but they haven't really entered in one tournament. So they have an asterisk. They're kind of like a half example. So that's seven farm players who originated farm and adapted and learned to run town as well and win tournaments on there, at least five or six. And here's the list for the opposite of players who ran town and now have come to farm and been successful. And Knuckles, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody give me a suggestion. But Knuckles clearly ran down in all of 2013. He was the best player then. He's still a very good player. Won all the tournaments. 
and has now come to farm, but still has an asterisk because I'd say he's probably won about two to three tournaments on farm. Still hasn't really ran it, but he's certainly a very good player. So when Gazelle says farm players can't come to town and compete, you got to look at what town players come to farm and can, can compete, and there's only one, and he's, he's an asterisk. He's half a point. So that statement's completely false, as always, because, again, Gazelle can never back up anything he says with substantial evidence. All he says is, without a doubt, because I'm a high player, you should believe in what I'm saying. So, I mean, that's just foolish. And all we hold all the leverage on Gazelle because we started farm, ran it, and then we came to town and also ran it, especially me when I beat him three, you know, three tournaments in a row. Clear proof on my cap card. You know, he hosted American host only because he was so afraid of UK teams. He didn't really understand how to deal with connection because he can only play on his four bar just like Bane. So, I mean, he was afraid to play people across the world because he knew he, he might get beat, and he did. And again, he got beat in his American host only tournament because there's never been a tournament like that. Everybody understands it needs to be open to UK and American to really find out if you're the best player in the world. But he was so scared of uh, my team that he did that, and we still played in his tournament, and 3 swept them in the finals with two two bars. Town does take the most skill. Don't get into uh, more detail in a second, but it's basically town takes the most skill with farm at second, and then cell block taking the lead. All right. So first thing I'd point out before I get into what I actually believe what's the best map is that uh, he doesn't he doesn't use the word skill right. Like he's trying to I understand he's trying to imply like what map he thinks is the best to prove like who's the best quote unquote grief player. Like he's trying to say like strategy, skill, luck, and all that is what he's saying. When he breaks it down into just skill, that's not all of grief. Like as he should know, he you know Gazelle himself has no skill. He knows that what he excels in is the grief IQ and the strategy part. He excels in it. He's not the best, but. So, I mean, he got that wrong, so let's get that out of the way. And then, obviously, I think farm takes a little, not obviously, but I think it takes a little more skill and a lot more strategy than town does, personally. I think he got cell block right, and the overall theme, personally, cell block to me, just plays poorly because of the map layout, you know, it just doesn't seem to work well. The max ammo on 20 is just kind of ridiculous. Uh, it makes it a lot of luck in the game type, but, uh... I'll have slides here in a minute, like, uh, showing you, you know, by list, like, what's the pros and cons of kind of each map, but what a typical, you know, non-farm player thinks, like, Zell is, oh, you can spray people down being a two-hit, and he tries to even the fact that, you know, tight trains aren't run, as it makes for an easy revive on farm. He doesn't say, I don't show the clip, but he implies that since the, tain the trains are less tight, it's easier to get a revive and whatnot, but that's simply not true, and I'll tell you uh, more here in a sec. The thing about farm is that sense, there's no jug. People can't run trains without being killed instantly, so basically for revives, all you need to do is have your teammate pull, and someone goes in for an uncontested revive. Now that statement you just heard, easily the most inaccurate statement he says all video, like, no, I couldn't find one one part of the three-part statement that made any sense. It's just, everything about it he said is false. So he says, the thing about farms that since there's no jug, you can't run tight trains. Which, it's all relative. I mean, he obviously he's trying to work his viewpoint, and oh, yay town, because he does not know how to play farm. But it's all relative. You run a lighter train, yes, because you can get shot easier with an MP5 because you're only a two hit down. But for that exact reason, it's literally twice as hard to get a revive because you have no quick revive and no jug. Well, it's at least two times as hard because it's half the speed of the revive and you have to worry about getting hit. You can't have any zombies near the revive. So he makes it sound so easy. Like you just have a teammate, you know, walk through there, a lot of da, just, you know, you can just walk through there, just stroll there and get, you know, a pool of the 10 zombies that's running the train and the teammate just gets an uncontested revive. That premise is just so, so false. It's it's unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen a... There's very few revives on farm where you just walk up and don't spin at all. You usually need a teammate to get a great pull. When you're only a two hit down, it's pretty hard to pull two zombies, or, you know, ten zombies off of a train, whether it's backfire or side barn. Usually you need to make some pretty nice escapes, and usually be when you're one-on-one -on -one battles in the corners or whatever, when you're trying to escape, like, side barn or back pit, so when he tries to dumb it down and your teammate gets a simple pull and you go in for an uncontested revive, that's just hilarious because if any map does that, it's town. You're a five hit down, you have 2.5 times the health, you have two times the revive speed, and, you know, the, the, yeah, the train's a little bit tighter, but you can walk up on town and pick up the revive. You don't need somebody to pull. You can hoard revive all day because it takes just over one second to get a revive. There's no actual skill in the spin of the revive where on farm you'll constantly see people 360-ing around three or four zombies, which is very difficult to do when you're only a two-hit down. You can't be anywhere near the zombies, so it takes good teamwork and good timing to go in for a safe revive. As I will show with these video clips, unfortunately I have to be in part two because I ran out of time here, but I'll show the difference between a farm, the average farm, and the average town revive, so we can put an end to this.